His Excellency uh, Mr. Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, President of the, Re the Islamic Republic of Iran. Your Excellency uh, Mr. Mohammed Ahmadinejad, you have the floor. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, all praise be to Allah, the Lord of the universe, and peace and blessing be upon our Master and Prophet Muhammad and his pure household. To his rightfulness, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Heads of State and Government, ladies and gentlemen, I don't have the floor. I thank the Almighty God for granting me the opportunity me to attend this important meeting. I also have the pleasure to express my sincere thanks to the government and people of Denmark for his responsibility and for making excellent arrangements to host this event. The untiring and tremendous efforts of the Secretariat towards the success of the meeting deserves our utmost appreciation. Friends and colleagues, the climate and the earth with all its resources belong to all nations as the blessing of the Almighty God and the equilibrium in this cycle is the engine of dynamism in human life and any disturbance of the balance may cause negative implications in the entire human community. Regrettably, the ongoing de devastating race in the world has seriously jeopardized this blessing, and failure to protect its harmony and balance will leave dire consequences in our planet. Allow me to draw your attention to the following facts. Concentration of greenhouse gases has increased 35% in the past decades, resulting in 2 degrees Celsius rise in the average temperature. Climatic conditions have been subject to drastic changes in the past in the part in most parts of the world destructive typhoons floods droughts food crisis and desertification continue to threaten very various regions change in ecosystems that has seriously endangered the life cycle of most animal and plant species millions of people lost their lives every year as a result of pollution-related illnesses, and there has been a sharp increase in the number of people suffering from skin and respiratory diseases. If greenhouse gases increase with its current pace, very soon its concentration will exceed as much two times the concentration in the pre-industrial era. It means that instead of having a 30% reduction, there will be an increase of 50% in greenhouse emissions, posing serious challenges in our life. Excellencies, by listening to these facts and similar ones, you might come up with many questions and other facts. But the main question is, what is the reason? The f answer is the increasing use of fossil fuels and massive and destructive intervention in the functions of the nature. However, there is a main and more serious question. What is the factor responsible for the growing demand for fossil fuel and intervention in the functioning of the nature? I want to analyze the answer to this question at two levels. The first level, which is based on the general outlook. Is the phenomenon of climate change merely regarded as an environmental having cultural, behavioral, and economic dimensions. Dear colleagues, social and cultural developments, at least in the past two centuries, indicate materialistic thoughts predominate people's mind, behavior, and relationship 
in a large part of the world. Capitalism can only survive only through constant increase in the consumption of goods and widespread intervention in the work of the nature. A relentless race continues to provoke consumption to increase the wealth and influence of the large enterprises. Development plans are based on consumerism. And in some parts of the world, consumerism has become a social value. Unending campaigns to increase production for more consumption and, encour and encouraging consumption for more production have emerged as an endless cycle of devastation, affecting the lives of a large number of people in the world. You have seen the serious problems they have caused in the midst of the global economic crisis by printing 30,000 billions of worthless dollars as unreal wealth. Based on materialistic outlook, maximum pleasures and individualistic interests have turned into a strategic and unchangeable goal. Increased consumption and continued efforts to monopolize the world and indigenous markets, preventing self-reliance and the growing tendency to tighten controls on the production of new technologies are the product and manifestations of such an outlook, a way of thought that has an insatiable hunger and seeks more profit by provoking arms race and conflicts leading to a mountain demands for arms in the world. They are the product of an outlook on the premises of capitalist and liberal economy that needs to use low-priced fuel and destroy the nature. The political level the ambition to gain access and control energy resources in the world has always been the root cause of wars and major international conflicts, and energy has always been regarded as a major political and security issue. For about a century, oil has constituted the basic and strategic components of U.S. security foreign policy. The same role energy has played for the previous empires. During this period, oil reached regions of the world became the theaters of wars and military adventurism that led to foreign domination under energy resources. The United States, having 5% of the world population, consumes 25% of oil and energy, more than 80% of wood and 14% of water resources of the world. Almost 40% of the total motor vehicles of the world are moving in this country. By occupying and controlling oil wells in other countries, the country's military budget is almost equivalent to the military budgets of the majority of countries altogether. And it has an active presence in all armed conflicts and wars in the world. The so-called developed nations, with 20% of the total world population, consume 85% of world energy resources, and therefore they play a large part in environmental pollution. What will really happen if other nations follow the same policies and behavior?
American leaders and their friends emphasize continued increase of fossil fuel production whilst they resort to various coercive methods to hinder development of new technologies intended to promote the use of renewable and clean energy.